there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter Sketch. Today, kind of, it's kind of Sketchbook Sunday. I just got back from a um, weekend getaway that uh, we went. We, my husband and I, took the kids up to St. John, New Brunswick, and um, I did some sketching. Actually, um, I, I brought this. I wore my my new necklace that I made, my new watercolor necklace. It's a tutorial of that on my YouTube channel, and I we were doing some hiking at Irving Nature Park which is in um which is in st john it was just kind of one of the places to see we really didn't we never been there before so we just kind of plugged that into the gps and stopped there and it was a beautiful um nature park and i can't believe how many like free parks there are outdoor parks up there it's it was beautiful um so while i was in the car i actually um i actually did this sketch here just some like imaginary roses and then um i wanted to kind of give this book a little bit of a, of a try because i hadn't used it so there are a couple <laughs> problems with this because this binding I did on folded pages instead of single pages I would have been better off to have a longer book with single pages taped together the folding um, may really weaken the tape especially considering I had the thinner tape here so the pages that I actually sketched on which these sketches are not the best I was like completely out of water when I was as I was working on these I ran out of my water brush water and it was just uh, the small water brush so there was a problem because I didn't have a water bottle on me or anything um, and I didn't know about putting like salt water in my water brush. I thought it might do some funky stuff with it. Uh, so, um, so anyway, so there was a couple issues. I should have had a little Kool-Aid, um, those little Kool-Aid flavor enhancer bottles that I keep and I wash out and I used to refill water brushes, but I didn't, I wasn't that well planned and I didn't have pockets and I'm, and I'm wearing this ridiculous dress. I'm wearing this like peasant dress. It's down to my feet. It's long. Um, with flip-flops i forgot to pack sneakers and i'm hiking these like on these rocky on this rocky shoreline in my flip-flops i'm like oh my gosh thank goodness I you know <laughs> break my nose or anything but um so yeah that that's that was a problem so what i'm gonna end up doing actually is i'm gonna take this apart and um these pages that i've already done i'm just gonna stick them in my uh, scrapbook with some other mementos from the trip but what i'm gonna do with the other pages is i am going to take this apart and i'm gonna interleave them so i'll only have our actual true panoramic spread every like probably six pages i'll do signatures that are probably like um uh probably for uh, papers and then I'll, I'll just fold them together. So I will be able to take them out if I want to do a full panoramic spread. And then I'll just have a few straps going around the spine, probably with an elastic cord, because at this point that will be the easiest. And then I'll have um, my book that way. Um, because this isn't going to work if I'm if I'm out there using it. Maybe if I, well, with the wider tape it does work a little bit better, but the, the skinnier stuff just wants to pop off too easily. And when you're trying to balance this in your hand and this in your hand, because I kind of hold it like this and I've got my palette open and my little mixing area from my the back of that thing on my hand I'm holding my water brush on this as I balance on jagged rocks and flip-flops I really can't have anything else going on I can't have pages falling out it's just too much to handle so I'm gonna do a different signature method um, and I do have a tutorial on that method it is the the uh, leather journal um, might be called, it's, it, I did it a couple of years ago it's a le it's um it's a just look, search bookbinding on my channel and you can find it. So, uh, so I did have to. Um, I am going to rework this idea, but it was useful while I was out there. Since I never had more than like five or ten minutes to sketch, that was a perfect size paper. I wouldn't have been able to do much more than that. So um, the next thing I want to show you is actually from the way the drive home we stopped at the Huntsman Aquarium and I typically don't buy souvenirs however um, I have been looking for a I I can't remember the last time I bought a like a reusable travel mug because I usually just I usually have my coffee in the morning at home and I can't have more coffee than that during the day I get too jittery especially the older I get I can't handle more than that coffee in the morning um, but there's been times where I've wanted to make my coffee too cold so I was thinking this glass mug with the silicone top would be perfect I can throw it in the dishwasher and then if I do have to like uh, head out the door or in the fall if I want to walk in the morning I can take it with me and it's gonna stay a little bit warmer and not spill or if I'm working down here in the craft room and I'm, it's the afternoon and I'm drinking tea um, I can keep it warm and the other thing is if you use like um, all the other travel mugs I have are all like kind of promotional things they're all like plastic or they're they might be stainless steel but they're plastic 
plastic lined and they um and they like if you use them for coffee and tea coffee is such a strong flavor that even after you wash it you can still kind of taste it when you have tea so i think this will wash out a lot nicer and um and then i won't have any coffee flavors in my tea since i do drink both i know it really bothers tea drinkers if they get a cup like a plastic mug it's been used with coffee before because they can really taste it. it doesn't bother me that bad but i still would rather have my tea tasting like um like tea so uh so i grabbed that at the huntsman across Aquarium. It was a that was kind of a nice surprise. We just kind of came upon it when we were driving home, and then um, another thing I saw there that I just could not believe was only six dollars and ninety five cents Canadian. So it was probably closer to like five twenty five American. Were these little painted bags? They were filled with saltwater taffy, and I just could not believe would paint these and sell them so inexpensively and I mean there were tons of them they were all scenes from St. Andrews New Brunswick um, I don't know if anybody does and they want to leave her name or his name I'm not sure in the comments below um, let us know she they, and I asked the people when I was paying I said I cannot believe that this is that somebody would paint this for under seven dollars it's so pretty um, and so they were all well done they didn't look like they were just slapped together they were all really well done and um and she said, oh yeah, we found this uh, this local painter who painted on Deer Isle, which is, there's a Deer Isle in Maine, but this Deer Isle is in um, uh, New Brunswick. And she said she was selling them for $3 in her gift shop. And so they had her paint up a bunch for them. And um, A, this is gorgeous that you share your gift for so inexpensively with so many people. And B, you could charge more for your work. You really can. You're a talented uh, MP, whoever you are. This is lovely and I'm gonna cherish it. It's gonna go in my scrapbook with my other um, uh, New Brunswick memorabilia. So if anybody knows who this artist is and wants to like leave a link to her website in the comments or shout her out or whatever just just let me know I mean I think that I think when somebody shares so generously with the world they should be noted for that okay so I just was that was such a that was such a thrill to come home with something that was hand painted I just love that okay so the other place I went to um so I was really excited because uh, as I've mentioned probably many times, I don't have a Michaels near me, and um, it's always a thrill when I go to Massachusetts to teach every June, um, there's a Michaels near the convention center, so I always go in there. And when I went this year, the two things that I wanted were sold out, and they were the silicone molds uh, by Prima, and not only did the Michaels in St. John, New Brunswick have them, they were 50% off. And, um, oh my gosh, people are so nice. I, I, I have to say one thing about Canadians, and I don't wanna just generalize people but this is a good a good thing they just are so pleasant any anytime you go into a shop people are so pleasant and so um, I'm paying and um, my daughter got a charm like a, a necklace pendant and um because i saw they offered coupons oh yes we offer we take coupons um if you're, are you a teacher we have a discount for teachers i'm like i actually am because i do a program at the library and i had my library pay stub um with me and in my wallet and he's like oh yeah there's another 15 percent off and i was just like oh my gosh they're just so nice so um i think i paid with these two things and the charm that was regular like seven dollars i think i paid it's like $16 Canadian, which is probably about 13 or 14 US. Um, so I was really thrilled because I tried to get these in Massachusetts, but they were sold out. And I want to do, I'm not sure if I'm going to use hot glue or clay in these, but I want to do one of those mixed media canvases. Um, like Finnebear does because they're so they look like they'd be so much fun to make so I want to just find like I have so many different molds I'd like to just maybe cast them in plaster or glue and gesso them and just make a cool collage and dribble paint and have some fun let me know if you want to see a tutorial on that because I'm just gonna play whether anybody wants to see it or not I might just play for fun and not film it or I will film it if anybody's interested um, I'm not uh, I'm just gonna kind of do my own thing but um, just seeing her work kind of inspired me and I thought that would be fun to try and that's her product that Prima I do believe that's a that's a Finnebear product it's always it's with all of her pretty paints and stuff I don't have any of her paints but uh, that's where those are those were located um, and then the other stuff I got was actually from Dollarama I have my my Hannaford Hannaford bag here uh, one thing I also really like about being in Canada is that uh, so ecologically minded not only is it just beautiful and there's so much green everywhere I love that it's very very similar to Maine um, but less people this time of year <laughs> um, 
is that there will be signs on the door saying, do you have a reusable bag? I mean, we only see that at the grocery store here. It's, you almost looked at funny if you bring in a reusable bag to anything, any place other than a grocery store. So I thought that was really cool. So I sent my kids back out to the car at Dollarama to get, um, to get my bags. And I found some really nice things there. I've never been in one before. Um, I was really excited to find this because I actually did look at Michael's for some wooden shapes. I really like those wooden shapes for card making. Um, and I find the ones that I use are really like the, um, the plain ones like these and so when I saw this set is four dollars Canadian so probably around three American I don't know for I think like a hundred dollars American is worth 150 Canadian right now um or this weekend anyway and so I really like these they're very plain but this is a sort of thing I really like to use on my cards and I couldn't believe I got all these shapes for four dollars um definitely stuff that I use all the I did find a few different ones at the stamp show I went to and I've already used quite a few of them um I just really enjoy these I find these just plain um, wooden shapes to be so fun to use and so useful and they just seem to accent perfectly and not look like overdone or gaudy so I got those um, I also got these owl ones which I'll probably share with my friend Kathy whose daughter loves owls because there are nine in here and I probably won't find owl embellishments but I thought they were really cute they look kind of 70s um and they also had some some sets that had like hummingbirds, dragonflies, and butterflies, but I really only like the dragonflies, so I didn't want to get the whole thing knowing that I probably wouldn't use them all or um, or anything. So old Lindsay would have just got one of everything, please, and thank you very much, you know? <laughs> but new Lindsay is trying to only get things that, uh, that she will use. So the other thing I got, I was, and it was funny because I don't know if you watched my tutorial on Friday um, because I wasn't here, I didn't live stream, I did a pre-recording of an oil painting um, of a sunset and it is up on my YouTube channel, of course, if you want to check it out. And I was talking about how um, I use a soap called Masters Brush Cleaner and I recommended the small cakes because, you know, they get kind of gummy and, and, uh, and then by the time I've used that up, I just buy another small cake. But then I was thinking, you know, I really shouldn't because that's small things plastic I could get the big tubs and then I realized um, because I I don't know if I should say this or not but I do this I don't know if I should recommend it because I don't know if there's any reason I shouldn't but um, I often use lava soap to clean my brushes I always use lava soap to clean my hands I don't like to leave the bar of lava soap on my sink though because it gets really like um, we know how soap bars get all kind of grimy underneath they get kind of um, like slimy on the bottom. Um, so I was thinking I will take one of these, put my bar of lava soap in here and one I'll just leave in there for cleaning my brush. So I'll keep the, the, the cake of soap in here and just clean my brush. And you know, if it gets slimy and oozy and you know, forms to the bottom of the box, that's fine. So it'll be just like my master's brush cleaner. Lava soap is not like marketed as a brush cleaner. I happen to use it as a brush cleaner a lot. Um, and I don't know if there's any reason I shouldn't recommend that. I've never had any harm come to any of my brushes using lava, but there is a little bit of a grit to it. So I probably wouldn't use it for watercolor. To tell you the truth, I rarely wash my watercolor brushes. I just rinse them. And then once in a while, I'll wash them with some dish, dish soap, something with no grit. But I think it like for um, oil or acrylic brushes, cause you really need to beat that paint out of them. I use lava for that. So these are two for a dollar. So I'm gonna use one for cleaning brushes. I'll probably use the darker one. And the other one for my lava for cleaning hands. The lava that I would take out, wash my hands, um, like kind of dry off a bit and put back in. So those are two for a dollar. Um, so no more slimy mess on my sink. And I will use every scrap of the soap, which is great. And no more little, um, little uh, master's things throw away. I was thinking about cutting the lava up to fit inside the master's little master's cake, but I'm like, oh, I don't, I think I would waste more than I would, than I would save. Uh, the other thing, another thing that we got was clothespins. My husband actually picked these up because I don't know what happens to clothespins around here, but they disappear and I use them. We're not fancy. I use them to like close up, um, like, you know, snacks or like cereal bags and stuff. I don't pour everything into beautiful containers. Um, I am not a, like that organized. I keep things in their original containers pretty much and, you know, put a clip on them. But then also, um, I just did back to school shopping with my daughters. I'm sorry, this is, this is probably sounding more like a podcast. I know I'm talking fast. Um, I'm, I wish this was more visually appealing. Uh, <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> uh, so, you know, carry on about your day, clean your house, just listen to the audio, I guess. Um, but my, we took the kids clothes shopping, back to school clothes shopping, and they bought a lot of, um, it's called modern fit, which basically means you could spray paint on these clothes, these jeans. So I'm like, so getting to the, the, the compromise of what I will absolutely not let you wear to school and what mom looks so baggy, there is bunching behind my knees, I can't possibly wear this. That compromise 
difference in between it, you know, not being absolutely spray painted on skin tight and it, you know, not being too baggy or too bunchy or anything. I'm like, I can, cannot let these close. If these jeans shrink, which is probably what they want them to do, I won't let them out of the house in them. So I figured if I wash their clothes in cold and I hang them up to dry, then we will, we will keep the peace in our household. So we got some clothespins. And also, um, there's so many bright colors out. Well, not really bright. They're like the muted autumn jewel tones that are really popular this year. So I also don't want um, stuff to fade that they've just bought. Um, they have dress codes at their school and uh, they can't wear blue jeans, but they can wear colored jeans. So um, they've got a lot of different like brightly colored jeans that I don't want to fade either. So clothespins. And plus it's going to be better for the environment because I won't be running the dryer so much. So well, welcome to my house. There'll be clothes hanging everywhere. <laughs> Um, I also got these cute little uh, sequins. The thing I thought would be fun about these is that um, they're cupped, they're, they're flowers, but they have like a little bit of a, um, like a more of a cupped shape to them, almost like a bead cap. And I thought they might be kind of fun to use on earrings or around beads if I want like so I was just thinking especially for earrings because they would be nice and light not add any weight but they would be pretty over a bead or kind of under a bead like hugging a bead or maybe even on bracelets um maybe just I, I might use more of the muted colors for that but I thought that was a great deal $1.25 um which would be like a dollar in USA currency and um I thought they were I thought they were really fun and I do use sequins quite a bit from shaker cards to uh to jewelry making to just like gluing on cards or scrapbooks so um so I grabbed those I was just gonna get that cut that one coral color but then I thought you know I use sequins a lot there's something I actually do grab quite frequently so I got each of those colors and um, I got a couple of these little glitters and I will actually have a glitter video coming up soon on how I index some new glitters. Actually, I can show you those glitters. Hang on a second. My glitter stash had gotten kind of depleted because um, my kids use it a lot. They'd used it a lot in the whole slime craze, which I wasn't crazy about, but I've just let kids be creative, right? Um, and I had been had a lot of my glitters depleted and I do like to use glitter, especially around the holidays. So um, Arteza sent me this set, but the thing is I love the storage. I'm, I couldn't think of a better way to store these, but I couldn't see what the glitter was. So I've got an idea, I've got a solution and I'm gonna share that with you a couple, in a couple of days, but there are so many pretty colors of extra fine glitter here. And the extra fine, fine is really nice because um, it looks, I think a little bit, um, just more sophisticated sometimes like on uh, card making and whatnot but these um this chunky kind of round glitter i really like i had some by doodlebug but i've used up um quite a bit of it and my daughter's just used up the last of my clear which is like my favorite color uh so i grabbed that that was a dollar 25 i believe and then they had little star shaped ones which i thought might be pretty in um in maybe shakers or some something you know sprinkled on some some cards like if you're doing a halloween and you have like a star a trail of like witch dust or something maybe sprinkling some of those stars uh and i love the little glass bottles which can be handy for jewelry making when they're empty or you could actually you know wrap them in wire and make a pendant out of them um with a glitter in it that would be pretty and then last but not least I, this is the first thing i picked up and i almost put it back because it was a little frivolous but i was so excited and i thought with fall this would be so fun to have on my table my art table while I paint. Um, it's a ceramic plate and it's this big leaf and I thought there's almost natural little divisions here where the uh, ceramic walls are of the veins, the ceramic veins are. So I thought that will be ideal for me to, I could either put out little dabs of paint or I can use a poster putty to stick my pans in if I have the paint already panned. And um, this will be such a lovely big mixing area and it was four dollars which I thought which would be probably around three, 325 American or so. But I thought that was just so nice. It doesn't wobble, it sits really well. And um, I just thought this will be so pretty on my table as I'm mixing colors when I'm doing my fall videos and uh, watercolor videos. And it's just, I thought it was lovely. I thought they had a lot of really pretty uh, ceramic things. I could have gone crazy. Old Lindsay would have gone crazy, but I didn't, I just got the one thing. Plus I didn't know how it was gonna travel back in the van, in the minivan with all of our bags and kids and everything. So that was my sketchbook Sunday mini haul. Sorry there's no time lapse today, but um, I didn't have time to do that, but I did have time to do this and I just wanted to share uh, my my little, what, what happened with my book here and how I'm going to fix it. Uh, because Hey, I'm honest. I tell you when stuff works, I tell you when it doesn't work that great um, because I feel like that's the, the 
honest relationship that you and I share. Uh, please give me a thumbs up if you liked it. If you have any questions about anything I got, let me know in the comments below. If you left a comment in my um, on my blog over the past couple of days, I am honestly going through and moderating all the comments now. So if you signed up for the um, brush pen giveaway I posted the other day, don't worry. If you put the if you put your comment in, even if it didn't show up yet, it's there. I just need to go through all those um, comments and approve them. Um, I have caught up in my classroom over on my Teachable School and uh, other than that I'm going to do my best so if you haven't heard from me then you can feel free to leave another comment uh, wherever you commented before and I will get back to you. Blog comments kind of crazy right now so I would leave it on YouTube if you <laughs> definitely want to hear from me because I'm kind of just they're mostly entries to our contest so um I'm just mostly just mass approving them um so I just don't want anyone to get left out thank you so much for watching again thumbs up if you like this video and until next time happy crafting